there it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we're going to be doing a watercolour piece using these gorgeous Tim Holtz floral stamps so I'm starting off with this tattered lace large rectangle die and I've taken the fifth one in there and I'm just drawing around it to use as a guide for the size of my finished watercolour piece I've then already stamped and rough cut around the flower heads so that I've created a mask for them and then what I'm doing is I'm setting out the stamps how I want to actually stamp it I find that quite helpful to just get an idea it also helps me work out the order of the stamping because of obviously I'm needing to mask some off now in order to remember that I actually just take a photograph of that stamped piece and then I've taken those first three flowers so they're the flowers that I need at uh, to stamp first so that they um, then can be masked off and other the bits that you stamp first are going to be in the foreground anything you stamp next is the layer behind them because it's sort of back to front what you think you think oh you're stamping it first so it's going to be on the back but it's the reverse so you stamp anything that you want at the very front first and then work your way down to the back layer and that way you can mask off your um, stamps as you go along now I use my Versamark here and some white embossing powder from Creative Expressions this is really lovely fine embossing powder so you get a really lovely detail but of course it's quite hard for me to show you this on camera because it's kind of white on white so what I'm doing is I'm stamping them and then embossing and heat embossing them straight away because if you then go back and try and stamp again or mask them off obviously you're going to smush up all your stamped um, ink areas so you need to make sure it's all set up ready to go for the next section so here I'm masking off my flowers so I'm just putting these down using a little bit of my tape pen and then I'm just um literally just pressing really lightly because you don't want it to pull up any of the paper and then I'm just positioning the next elements down now as it happens I've got this wrong that leaf uh, piece on the left hand side there was not the next layer I actually had a flower that was in the middle between those two flowers there and that should have come down next so it actually slightly messed it up for me because the flower was meant to be um, behind the leaf so what I've done is I've stamped it and I, I then didn't think about it in time so I then didn't even mask the leaf off because I could have reversed it I could have made the leaf the other way around as you can see I've now put that over the leaf but I didn't mask the leaf so I'm literally getting that embossed piece straight through the middle of that flower now what I actually did afterwards is I actually kind of scraped it off it wasn't ideal but it it got rid of most of the kind of embossed part enough for me to color it but it was just a bit of a nuisance so then I've gone along Long, I've embossed all of those bits I've stamped uh, and done all the stalks and everything and I'm just trying to show it there to you but it is quite hard being white so then the next thing I want to do is put my sentiment down and this is a Simon Says Stamp stamp and I'm just going to put wishing you the best day ever and for this I'm going to be using my Versafine in black I really like this again it works really well um, on these lovely fine sort of sentiment stamps it just comes up really well the other thing you have to be cautious of and why it works really well in this stamp platform is we're working on watercolor card here and it even on the smoother sides it just still has a little bit of texture to it and as you can see there it didn't quite stamp some of that and the advantage of course of being on here is that you can easily go back so if you can if you've got one of these then I would definitely recommend it so I'm going to color these in using these Kurataki Zig clean color brush markers and normally I would go off and I would give you a load of music but um, today I thought I would talk through what I was doing and just um, just explain in case you're new to these markers or just any just want to hear me chat <laughs> instead of music if you don't then turn the volume down and just enjoy the colouring so what I'm doing here is I've first of all I put a layer of water down onto the 
the part that I want to actually watercolor and then I added my darker color first in the area that was the center here for example and then I added my next darkest color and then for me because I wanted to add the so that's my next darkest color let me catch up with where we are here because and then I want to add the yellow and I'm allowing the colors to blend in that doesn't damage the brush at all because these are like little brushes on the end of these markers and then to just really kind of feather the color out so that it really blends out I'm just using a paintbrush with water on just to blend those colors through and really just try and make the transition between one to the other really subtle um, and again it's about layering as well because with a lot of these um markers you you kind of want to let it dry and then go back in again because if you keep adding to it when it's wet you sometimes don't get that um distinction whereas if you let it dry and then add another color it kind of doesn't mush together quite the same what i did there was i'd found a color that i was doing on here and i thought it was a little bit darker and it just added that little bit of extra definition to the shadow so i just added that in and then i quite liked it so i went back to the other one uh, for that so here are the three greens that I'm going to be using for my stalks and leaves and you can choose whatever works for you but again here I've added the water first and this is the advantage of embossing because the embossing acts is almost like a um, like <sighs> what's the word like little walls to your water and your color so it stops it flooding out too far as long as you don't put like masses down it kind of stops it and it sort of keeps it within the, the definition of the area that you want it to be in and I think that works really well so all I'm doing here is I'm starting with my lightest color I'm putting that down across the whole lot and then here I'm just doing a little bit on the leaf and blending that through and then I take my next darkest color or actually sorry in this one I'm doing a bit of yellow yes that's right because I thought the yellow would look really nice at the bottom just give it a bit of almost like the sun shining through the bottom of the leaf that kind of almost translucent kind of limey color that you get and I did that by merging the yellow and the green together a little bit so then I've just kept adding in the darker color in the areas where you think that you're going to have bits of shadow so areas where perhaps the leaves are touching joints so sort of um where the stalks say at that v there at the bottom there that would be darker there would be certain sections of the leaf on the top maybe or to the back of the leaf there you can kind of decide i mean it's really not that massively important i think unless we're trying to do like an absolute masterpiece you know long as you get it roughly right and you add the shadows in it's going to look good um obviously you want to do where to a certain extent there are likely to be darker areas so under where leaves are say touching those um stalks they're going to be darker because the shadow would be created etc but don't get too hung up on it um you know as long as you put, add some shading it's going to look better than not to be honest so just play with it and enjoy it and don't get too worried about it so now i'm doing my flowers and i decided to go for some blues and purples which was slightly unusual perhaps for flowers but i just thought it would be kind of cool so you want to make sure that the area that you had worked on previously is completely dry i let it dry naturally by the time i'd finished the other areas this had dried so here you can see at the point where the flower had met that kind of flower head part we took the darkest color then I put my mid color down next to it and then I took my bright blue and did it at the petal points and now what I'm doing is taking my paintbrush and I'm pulling that color down towards the paler blue what that does is obviously dilute the darker blue and start to make it be able to merge with the other one so now what I'm doing is pulling the other color up so then the two will meet in the middle and we'll start to blend them together and that just adds that lovely blend through so then when you want to just add a little bit more color to add a little bit more definition and just keep layering that up now here I decided that the petal points now were just a little bit dark so where I'd pulled it down I just pulled it a little bit too far so I'm just taking my paintbrush and I'm just going over that and with clean water and pushing up the color towards the center there and that just pushes some of that color off the petal points and 
here I'm just taking that paler blue and just blending in the mid-tone area as well just to um, try and blend that through but here again I still felt that was a little bit dark so I just took my little uh, baby wipe and just patted on those ends and that just took away a bit of that colour so now we're going to the next flower here I'm still doing a bluey flower so I'm taking where the centre of the flower is and I'm adding the darkest colour uh, sorry it's a purple flower going bananas in my old age and then I but I wanted to get the blues in there so it it, it was tonally comfortable with my blue flower but you still wanted it to be a purple flower so by adding the blue but mixing it in a little bit with the dark purple it kind of worked so for this one originally I was gonna add color like I did with the previous flower but I really liked how when I pulled the color out to the tips it just made its own pale color I just thought it looked so pretty so here what I'm doing is I'm just adding some darker color to the center with the blue and just making that a little bit more definition in the center there and then the same with the purple because I didn't want it so blue but I wanted it as I said to mix in nicely so here we've got um, another flower it's really hard to see them and again I'm just laying down my water first now this one has petals that are curling up so what I'm trying to do is where the petals are either overlapping or curling over other petals you can see that blue sort of line I've got in the middle there I'm just going over it with purple as well I'm just trying to add that there as the darkest area because that's where the petals are kind of cross um creating a bit of shadow over each other and by just looking at that that's when you'll just add that little bit of extra definition to your flower um don't kind of think about it in that or get too worried about it just think all right that flower petal is look will be overlapping the other one so let's add a darker color there and then just blend it out almost don't look at it closely uh, as far away I mean because if you look at it too much you you kind of try to make it look like a flower but actually when I'm doing it I'm just thinking it looks a mess but then when you pull back all of a sudden it looks right and it works and I think you know if you just kind of put the color where the darker areas ought to be and don't try to make it look like a flower but just think about where the dark areas are and where the uh, light areas are and then it will naturally come into place but as I said don't get massively hung up on it you can see even though this is speeded up four times I'm really not getting too worried I'm thinking right the center is going to be darker because all the leaves are closer together and some of the areas where the petals are overlapping each other they will be darker so I just add a little bit of lighting there but I'm not getting massively hung up as you can see on this one I'm just barely adding anything to the lower area I'm mostly focusing on the center and here I'm just going along where I think the petals overlap a bit so this is the last flower here I think I think it is and um, for this one I wanted to go for a blue flower because I, I didn't want to have just the single blue flower so I'm again starting I'm sorry this is slightly off camera but I'm starting in the center and I'm putting the blue down now unlike my first blue flower although I'm going to make this predominantly blue I am adding a little purple into it again just to blend the blue flower into the um, other flowers just so it it works together now you'll see with this like the other one I have added the paler color around the edge of the flower so you can see where that top petal there it's kind of got a sort of fold over part so the the bit that's skinny would be the light part so like there down the bottom because that's the part that's coming around and it will be hitting the light it's the bit inside that's going to be the darker area so if you just keep the center part dark and those bits at the edges lighter you'll find that that will come together really well now in all honesty this is the point I should have stopped and what I did was I started playing with the center here and I regret that I don't think it turned out horrible but I think it looked better before I played with it now you'll see here what I was trying to do was blend the um, center in with the with the darker color on the outside what happened was because the outside petals were still wet the green just smushed out into the petals instead of staying where it should have done and so it just began and then it was too dark and uh, I just 
was trying to rescue it at this point so the only way I could rescue it really was to add some dark color around the edge there which okay that looked okay but and, and I wasn't unhappy with that I wasn't so keen on how the center turned out I preferred it how I had it before I played around as I said I don't think I was unhappy with it per se when it was finished I think what happened particularly was that the embossing sort of got slightly covered in color it didn't stay clean of color so it kind of didn't look as white as well so that's where I wasn't as happy anyway then as a finishing touch what I always like to do with things like this is put like a shadow around the entire image so what I did was I took the gray pen and I put it like a, a color palette at the side and then really watered it down and just added this very faint shadow around the edge but as you can see some were darker some were not but it just gives it a bit of pop off the page and I think that really really works well I just personally think that adds to it so then as you can see I cut that out using my tattered lace die and I think again that's come out really really well Next, using the next biggest die up on this set of tattered lace dies, I cut a square or oblong rectangle, whatever you want to call it, from this iris cardstock from Creative Expressions. I thought that was just a perfect colour for this uh, colours on the flowers here next I made a card base using my easy peasy card method um, and I used one half is the iris and one part in the coconut white and then I've just marked it because I was actually using some scrap of the iris so I didn't have an exact size on the top fold there normally I'd do like half an inch or an inch but I didn't have an exact amount so I just marked it with a pencil and scored it and then just using the red line tape I've stuck that together to create a gorgeous two-tone card and I just think that comes together really really well um however I did think that the card back particularly was just a little bit floppy once I was putting the weight of the other layers onto the front it would not be as strong so I added a center panel again just using up scraps uh, to the back there it just adds a bit of stability and then I had some little bits as you can see on the top there and also a little bit of scrap that I put on the bottom just to create a design on the inside again it adds a little bit of extra strength to the back but it also just made the inside look a little less dull when it was opened up and I thought actually just even using those tiny little scraps that looked really really well so I was pleased with that so then the next thing that I did was I stuck my uh, watercolour piece to the front of the iris cardstock and for this I use the red tape now you want to use something strong like that and you want to use a dry glue uh, tape like that because um, the watercolour will be slightly kind of wobbly the paper from being watercoloured so you want something that's going to stick it down straight away and really strongly so it literally flattens it out for you now I don't quite know what happened here but clearly I went slightly off size and considering they were dyes they should have been perfect but anyway so I just had to chop a tiny bit off the top but that worked fine and then all I did next was using some foam tape just to give a little bit of dimension I have added those to the back and as you know I love using plenty of foam tape and then using some cosmic shimmer uh, on the backs of the foam just because I always feel I always say it, that foam tape after time will deteriorate the sticky it tends to anyway in like central heating and stuff so I always like to add something like the cosmic shimmer because then it helps give that extra strength to the glue and it will make your card stay together for longer and as you see by adding all that foam there's not one single area even as I'm pushing it down to stick it that's falling you know dipping down so you know that's why I use such a lot so next I decided I wanted to add some little droplets and some sequins just to add a little bit of sparkle and yumminess to the card so all I did was position them where I wanted them to be and using a tiny little dot of cosmic shimmer I just moved the sequin out of the way put the dot down and then using my pokey tool just put the sequin or um, 
a little droplet back in place don't worry that you can see the glue at this point it doesn't matter because the glue dries completely dry so don't worry about that it will just sorry it dries completely dry of course it dries completely dry dries completely clear so there it is done and i think those sequins are a perfect color as well and i love the little droplets i just added two of those so that was it and i think it looks so pretty i was really really pleased with that so i hope you like it too now don't forget as always go on across to my blog post if you want to see lots more photos or details of the colors used and other products etc um, to find the blog post all you need to do if you're on youtube is go to the paragraph below the video click where it says show more and you will find a link taking you to the blog post so that is it for today thank you so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed and of course i hope that you like the card and i would love to hear what you think thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye for now bye buys are hard well at least we know what they are and we were warned before well maybe warnings don't work and maybe i had to say